You may recently have seen news articles suggesting that the good old days of no speed limits on German autobahns may soon be over. In order to cut down on carbon emissions, the government is considering introducing a speed limit of 110 km an hour, or 120, or 130. Things are moving quickly, it seems. Even as I sat down to write the script for this video, the police officers' trade union announced that they would like to see a speed limit of 130, which they say would help to reduce the number of accidents and traffic jams. Meanwhile, the German Automobile Association, the ADAC, argues, as it has done consistently for many years now, that a speed limit would have very little effect at all. The whole thing started last week. Now, the German government has tasked a commission with coming up with ideas for reducing pollution on the roads. Now, their report isn't due out until March, but a few days ago the German press agency was shown some of their preliminary ideas. There was a lot about ending tax breaks for diesel cars and establishing minimum quotas for electric and hybrid cars and things like that, but two of their proposals met with howls of protest raising the price of fuel and introducing a speed limit on the autobahns. These are two measures that are guaranteed to raise the blood pressure of German motorists, and it led to politicians reassuring the public that they currently had no plans to implement them, and the Commission reassuring the public that these were just ideas they were kicking around. As a method of cutting down on greenhouse gas emissions, the idea is controversial. The ADAC has calculated that a 120 km an hour speed limit would reduce Germany's overall carbon footprint by 0.5%. So could it reduce traffic jams? And if so, how? Okay. Have you ever been in one of those mysterious traffic jams where you spend half an hour inching your way forward and then when you get to the front, there's nothing there? That's a phenomenon that can be caused by a single driver braking just a bit too sharply. Imagine somebody driving at high speed and being forced to slow down suddenly. The car behind will have to brake a little bit harder to avoid a collision. The car behind that will have to brake a bit harder, the car behind that even harder, and so on all the way back down the line. So this ripples back and causes a shockwave traffic jam. There's a video explaining how that happens and I'll link to it in the description. The argument is that this is much more likely to happen if people are driving too fast, and so a speed limit would help to fix that. Not so, say other experts. Traffic flow can be managed by variable speed limits, and these already exist in Germany. Illuminated signs that show speed limits where and when they are required. If traffic is light, they're not required, and so they can be switched off. A default fixed speed limit won't necessarily help, and in any case, shockwave traffic jams occur in other countries as well. Another solution, assuming that we can perfect the technology, would be self-driving cars, so it's actually possible that the problem will solve itself in the next few decades. Would it result in fewer accidents? But of course, say the police, who are often first on the scene at horrific accidents. Nobody can possibly be fully in control of a vehicle at 200 km an hour. The counter-argument is that German autobahns are actually quite safe. According to the ADAC, they carry about one-third of all traffic in Germany, but account for only about 12% of all accidents. And German autobahns are no more dangerous than similar roads in neighbouring countries where there are speed limits. This isn't a new idea, it's been mooted a few times before. There was a speed limit during the oil crisis of 1973-74, to 74, but since then no German transport minister has made a serious effort to reintroduce it. It would be professional suicide. And so nobody really expects the government to do it this time either. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to send me a postcard, here's the address. And don't forget to visit my website and follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Also, if you'd like access to special bonus content and help with the costs of running this channel, please consider making a small monthly donation on Patreon.